Hello my friends and welcome, today we have the positive news from the front lines and let's go to the Bakhmut area. Yesterday I showed you that Ukrainian forces start to advance near to Rozdolivka. So today we have the confirmation of that advancement, but actually it's on a different place. So yesterday Ukraine advanced in this area and today advanced nearby. It means that we have two of the vectors of Ukrainian counterattack or attack action in this area. We also may check the update for two days, so it was yesterday, it was the day before yesterday, so you can see that Ukraine is quite aggressively in this part, so why does it important? Because here is the Solidar, it's very close, plus now Ukraine has the attack vector from Berhivka and today one more vector from this place, potentially we may cut all of this area. So Russians would be just forced to withdraw from this place, but the road, very important road, for them to leave very fast could be cut very soon. It is over here, not far away from Berhivka, but to establish the Ukrainian control over that territory, we need to take Krasnohara for sure. So the most important towns in this area are the Krasnohara and Solidar. Taking those would just destroy the Russian defense of the Bakhmut city. On the south, everything is usual. Ukrainian forces are still keeping the heights, the important hills under control, and Klishivka is still under the Russian control. Today, the Ukrainian general Sirsky said that Ukraine established the fire control over the Bakhmut city and surrounding areas. So, Russian forces are unable to freely supply their weaponry to this area because their ammunition depots are under the constant fire of the Ukrainian army, mostly artillery fire and the rocket artillery systems that we continue to use like Harmus. As for the south part, everything is standstill, there is no any change for today. As for the Kherson region, Antonovsky bridge, also there is no new update, just we have the confirmation of the deep state military map that our guys took control over this territory. However, as you can see, it's still in a gray zone because the fighting continues, Russia constantly fires their artillery towards Ukrainian positions, they want us to go back to Kherson and to the other shore, so the fighting continues, hopefully we'll have enough resources to advance further to Aleshki, taking this town is very important. You see that close to Aleshki there is the road that Russia uses for their supplies, and by taking Aleshki we're gonna cut this road for the Russian army. But still I do not expect the huge advancement of Ukrainian army in this area, because it's very hard to cross the Dnepr river with the heavy armored vehicles like tanks. About the Russian army, they've started to use their special reserves that guarded the Russian border with China. It means that Russia is really in a desperate, they're in lack of the life force, but still they create the mid waves and they don't care about the lives of their own soldiers from what we may see. Also, yesterday there was the information that Kadyrov sent his Kadyrov Ahmad battalion to fight in the Bakhmut area. And today some of the Russian opposition resources said that the Ahmad battalion was attacked by the Ukrainian artillery. Again, I don't have any kind of the video confirmation of that attack or any kind of the footages, so now it is hard to tell whether it's truth, the propaganda works from both of the sides. Later on we'll see if that information was correct or not. But what we know for sure that the commander of the Russian submarine that was used to target the Ukrainian infrastructure with caliber cruise missiles was shot today in Russia. He got four of the bullets and lost his life immediately. Why did it happen? No one knows so far. Unfortunately, it seems like the information from the Daily Mail resource that was shared about the Russian general Gerasimov dismissment was fake. Or it's better to say not correct, because Gerasimov went on a press conference and didn't say nothing about the case. He is still leading the special military operation in Ukraine, which is actually not as bad for Ukraine if you compare him with other generals, because General Gerasimov is in lack of the competence, let's say. Alright, breaking news. Turkey is okay for Sweden to join the NATO alliance. This evening it was officially said by the Turkish officials and also Jens Stoltenberg, the secretary of NATO. Plus, some of the resources in Sweden confirmed that. 
it seems like Turkish President Erdogan got what he wanted from Sweden, including the Kurdish issue. There is also the progress towards lifting some sanctions on Turkey. Turkey will also be close to join the European Union someday in the future. They are now working to join the customs union with the European Union and also visa free entry for Turkish citizens. Now Sweden's application should be ratified by the Turkish parliament. If Erdogan agrees, I think parliament would also agree. President Zelensky will also attend the NATO summit and there Ukraine will not be taken to NATO. It's 100%. I read an article today from some of the Western media resource like Wall Street Journal, I think, saying that there are two of the countries that are strictly opposing of the membership of Ukraine, United States and Germany. Why is it so? Because they are still concerned about the Russian nukes. But the majority of the NATO countries do support the membership of Ukraine. I think that finally Ukraine will be taken into NATO after the war is over. For now we'll have the guarantees from the United States of America, United Kingdom, Germany and many other allies in the constant supply of the weaponry to Ukraine. President Biden says that it's some sort of the Israel scenario, then Israel is still the ally of the United States. However, the United States are not fighting for Israel in its conflicts, let's say. But they supply the state-of-art weaponry, so Israel may do it on its own. Actually, it could be a fantastic program for Ukraine, but from the situation that I see right now, that we have even some issues delivering F-16s on time, those are quite old fighter jets and in case of Israel we are speaking about F-35 fighter jet airplanes. So I just hope that someday we'll have that scenario to receive the best of the best weaponry to Ukrainian army. Two weeks ago President Zelensky said that he would not attend the NATO summit without the firm decision for Ukraine and today he said that he will go for the summit. Probably there will be some sort of the decision for security guarantees for Ukraine. However, it's hard to say what those guarantees could be. President Biden has already arrived to Vilnius. It marks the importance of this meeting. The rain metal defense concern will open its factory in Ukraine and it will happen very soon in just three months. It will be used to provide the maintenance for their products and also produce the new ones. I think that it's gonna solve the issue with Leopard 2 tanks maintenance. Because Poland and Germany haven't been able to agree on that issue yet. The Turkish Baikar company that produces the Bayraktar drones has already started to build their factory on the Ukrainian territory. They're gonna use the Ukrainian made engines on some of their drones as well. I think that with all of the air defense systems that Ukraine currently has were able to provide the security for those factories. Alright, Turkey officially said that even if Russia leaves the grain agreement, they will provide security for the ships that go to Ukrainian ports. It is interesting because here Russia will be humiliated in both of the cases, if they leave the grain agreement or stay over there. The Snake Island liberation and the destruction of Moskva ship plays a great role in this Turkish support. Without the proper air defense that was installed in Moskva ship or in a Snake Island, they are unable to move far from Crimea, without the risks of being exposed and targeted by drones. Alright, now we have the video confirmation that Ahmad Battalion really had the losses somewhere in the Bakhmut area. They were attacked by the Ukrainian artillery and they had losses. I'll publish this video on my Telegram, I am unable to upload it on this resource. The Telegram channel you may find just in the video description below. Alright, we have the photo confirmation that Russia continued to use their heavy artillery systems or maybe rocket attacks close to Antonovsky Bridge, for example, here I hope you are able to see the huge boom. However, our guys are still keeping control over this area. The enemy side publishes the information that Ukraine started again the counterattack close to Oryahiv and we used the Leopard tanks once again. Plus Bradley's. Actually, I don't have the confirmation about it yet and the Russian resources mostly share the misinformation 
For example, yesterday I was watching the video that Ukrainian convoy was ambushed, but it was a very old video, dated more than one month ago, just from the different perspective. Actually, the Russian side has tremendous losses. They lose more vehicles, more soldiers, it is as usual for them. This video was recorded in the Russian maintenance facility. Unfortunately, they were able to evacuate the Terminator battle vehicle plus the T-90 state-of-art Russian tank. As you can see, probably it was the mine explosion underneath the tank that led to dramatic damage of it. However, it is still in one piece, again, unfortunately. The Russian media resources also shared the information that the Turkish base in Syria was under attack. This image hardly confirms something, so we should wait for official Turkish reaction. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Now, don't forget to press the like to this video. And also, if you want to support my job, you may find the links in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon, on the PayPal, or just on the sponsorship of this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your awesome support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and... Have a great time.